Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Many people develop a relationship with the opposite sex and don't realize that it is a haram relationship because it crosses the boundaries of what Islam has taught. Yes, interaction with the opposite sex is permissible within certain limits, but to flirt and thereafter to slide into the DMs and thereafter to start saying inappropriate things, to promise someone, I love you, I love you too, and so on. I miss you, I take care of you, I do this, I do that, and then this person says this, and that person says that, and so on. That's brewing a relationship that probably will end up in a lot of sadness and perhaps a lot of anxiety or depression at times. Because anything that is planted with a haram seed would germinate a tree or a plant that is equally wrong. May Allah Almighty protect all of us. So it's difficult because young people, boys and girls get to interact, they get to meet with each other. Many of them promise each other, I'm going to marry you and so on. And they end up using one another. And end of the day, they throw each other out. And that's it, the end of it. And who struggles and suffers? More so, the females suffer more than the males. But sometimes the males suffer too. The reason is, emotionally, a woman may get attached a girl may get attached. Be careful. A lot of the times what's being said is actually not genuine, even if it sounds very, very genuine. And sometimes it may be genuine to the degree where the guy does actually care for you. But the way he is dealing with it is not in the pleasure of Allah. And therefore, it won't end up in marriage as you wish or you thought because firstly, maybe he can't even afford to be married and the hadith says manistata'a whoever is able, capable, should get married. Not able, not capable. Secondly, the parents may never agree and that's why I tell people do not develop a haram relationship and if it does ever happen, then it better be someone whom your parents would really be proud of the fact that that person's come to ask for my daughter's hand in marriage. We are not condoning it at all, but if you are going to tell someone to speak to my father, let it be a person whom your father's going to be proud of. Your father's looked after you for years and decades and he's provided for you or your mother or your family members, they've provided for you and taken care of you. Why would you make such a big blunder as to spoil everything on the last leg of your living in with them by bringing in someone whom you know is a disaster. Nobody's going to agree. Nobody would want to look towards a person of that nature at times. However, there is another problem. Because of the haram, if it did go in that way, because of the haram, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want it to continue beyond a point. So it doesn't. And the sad part is when you've been used in the sense that it's become deeper than anything. It's, it's reached the limit. Zina was committed. If that's the case, then wallahi to come back at times is very, very challenging. In fact, it may cause lots of anxiety, lots of hardship and difficulty. All I can say is seek the forgiveness of Allah for indeed He's most forgiving, most merciful, but it will definitely have an impact upon you. Because you know deep down, you know what? What happened here? And this person came in and they promised me X, Y and Z. That's because you were also a part of it. You allowed it to a degree. No, but they promised me. But you allowed it to a degree. You were told already, don't believe the promises, especially promises made by young guys. A lot of the times they are just hot air. So you need to be careful. We want to deal with the difficulty of this haram relationship by either by making it halal or by cutting it out. There's no third option. You have, you have to cut it out or you have to make it halal. If you're going to cut it out, it comes at a price. Sometimes people say, oh, I'm very sad. How could you cut me out? You know, we developed a relation for so long. Now you're just cutting it out. That's another way of keeping it going on and on and on. There's no closure. You can slice it for the sake of Allah. And if you do slice it for the sake of Allah, let them deal with the withdrawal 
Allah will help them if they turn to Allah. And if they turn to shaitan, they won't be helped. And with you, Allah will help you. But whenever a cutting comes and a blocking comes, it needs to be a clean slice. Off, over, gone, for good. And then I'm not worried about what's going to happen to this person or that person because they were not worried when they were developing a haram relationship. They, and if they really wanted, they could have taken the halal steps, be brave enough to come and bold enough to come and say, listen, I got to know you, alhamdulillah, I'd really love to get married to you and I want to take this forward and take it forward. But for someone to keep promising, to keep dilly-dallying, to keep uh, saying things, a year passes or a, a few months pass, a year passes, two years pass and so on. Do you know what? They're playing you. That's what they're doing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. Many people, when they develop a haram relationship, especially in the subcontinent and even in some other places, they exchange pictures of each other. Sometimes, astaghfirullah, may Allah protect us, they end up exchanging nudes. And when they do that, they become enslaved by that particular person. Even if you send a one-time view, some of these young guys, what they're doing, they take an image of it. Sometimes they're playing with your emotions completely. I know of people who've then passed those images around the whole school. And I know of people who've then uh, passed them uh, online and sold some of this. And I've dealt with cases where people were so suicidal because of what happened to pictures, images, sometimes video calls or audio calls that were recorded by the other party that happened to be inappropriate completely, unbelievable sometimes. But people do it because they fall in the trap of shaitan. Today we are here to say, you know what? Protect yourself. Haram, haram relationships come at a price. And at a, that price sometimes is a bit much. You end up sometimes far worse than where you started. So as much as it is a little bit difficult to get married nowadays to decent people, but it's there and there are still a lot of good people on earth. Keep trying and Allah will open your doors. Don't compromise your relationship with Allah for your relationship with someone else besides Allah. Don't compromise your relationship with Allah for a relationship with another human. More so, don't ever compromise your relationship with Allah for something haram that is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine Allah has a connection with me. I'm cutting that to connect with someone else. Where am I left? I'm left in the hands of shaitan. That's exactly what has happened. So in order to protect ourselves from this, we must ensure and make sure that we stay in a way that is befitting who we are and what we should be doing. So if you want to have a relationship, make sure it's upright. If you want to get to know someone, make sure some of your family know and those who are your guardians are a part of it. Then inshallah, you won't go wrong. They won't be able to mess with you. They won't be able to play games with you. And only the serious ones would come in. You know what? I require marriage. But my brothers and sisters, haram relationships come with a lot of tragedy because sometimes people then wonder, should I tell a spouse that, is, that I'm going to be marrying that I've been in a haram relationship before and so on? The truth of the matter is if you've repented and you've turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely, in that particular instance, you don't have to say anything because Allah's already wiped it out. It's not there. Allah's wiped out the sin. It's gone. You're a changed person, completely different. However, many people make a mistake they are proud about their haram relations. They openly engage in it. They talk to all their friends about it. Then it's more difficult to come back to the path sometimes. Because even if you've changed, a lot of your friends would probably repeat that, oh, you were like this and you were like that. And you might end up, uh, you know, people might end up knowing all of this whom you didn't really want to tell. But that is a part of the problem. And this is why we say, abstain from it. Be strong. If you need to cut it, a clean cut, and Allah will help both parties by His will and His mercy. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد.